Okay, one further thing about LFO1 and LFO2, which I did not show, was the fact that if you hold down settings and hit mode, you have more options for the LFO, as if there weren't already enough options. Uh, you have the ability to have retrigger on, which we had it on, which would explain why some of the things I was doing didn't do, well, it's hard to tell that they weren't doing what they could do. But when you have retrigger on, the LFO's waveform starts with every note actuation. Uh, if you set it to retrigger off, it just uh, turns on the LFO wherever the LFO is currently at in its waveform. And uh, you also have the ability to set the polarity of the LFO, which I've never even seen in multiple LF LFOs before. Um, some more vintage LFOs just went from zero, um, in regard to voltage, from zero to its top voltage, uh, which is unipolar. Uh, but bipolar, uh, which goes from the highest voltage to the negative high, <laughs> the lowest negative voltage, past zero, through zero, and back up and down, uh, that's bipolar. So you can actually hear the difference. Let me set it up so you can hear it. Um, yeah. Something sad has happened. Um, whoa there. Okay. So we'll go into mods at LFO2. Okay, and then if we go into the LFO2 global, this is bipolar, and this is unipolar. You can hear that one of them is basically half as, has half as wide of a spread, and it's actually in a different voltage position. So you can get different outcomes. So you could actually have both LFO1 and LFO2 modulating the same thing in two different ways. Uh, so one of those is bipolar and the other is unipolar and uh, mixing LFOs to the same destination <laughs> that have our different types of LFO and it just gets crazy. <laughs> Um, suffice it to say, wow, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to get us out of this because I'm scared and don't know where I am anymore, which I'm <laughs> with this synthesizer. Okay. And let's move down into LFO3, which is different than LFO1 and LFO2. Has a lot of the same features, but is a different sort of architecture. Okay. So. The thing with LFO3 is they've given you the ability to sort of change the shape. It's not just a, a uh, sort of periodic wave shape. It is a periodic wave shape, but you can change the slopes of it uh, from a sine wave to other shapes. You can kind of see here in the picture, like you see kind of a dome shape and then kind of a point shape. And I think they're basically me. It, it's describing the uh, the stages, if you will, of the waveform and how you can change the shape of them. So let's have kind of a listen to get an idea of what the hell I'm talking about. Because to be honest, who knows what I'm talking about? Okay, we'll go in here and we'll just uh, get a wave shape going. <laughs> Okay, with curve and symmetry in the center, you're just going to get basically a sine wave. I'm going to turn curve to the left. You can probably hear that we no longer have a sine wave. We have some other wave. So 
So that's weird. And let's turn it to the right. So that's interesting. And uh, then we have symmetry, which uh, just shifts the proportion of each side of the wave in relationship to the other. I'm bad at math. Just float with me here. So in there, you can hear that the up is short and the down is long kind of short attack long decay if we're talking about envelopes and to be honest we kind of are because you can use this lfo as an envelope but we'll get to that oh man okay so the symmetry on the other direction gives you a long attack and a or and a short decay Then if we start messing with the curve after having done that to the symmetry. You get all kinds of different shapes. So this LFO is uh, definitely different. Um, also, uh, we also have the rate, of course. Very weird. Okay, we have a re-trigger button here. Um, so... Every time you play it, it re-triggers in the same way, which is super helpful, especially if you're using the envelope to create like drum sounds and whatever. Or you're using the sequencer and you want it to do the same thing in regard to what's been sequenced. Let's also take a look here because there's a little orange circle here. Let's see what it stands for. Uh, oh, you can set it to unipolar or bipolar. Uh, right now, ooh, it's on unipolar right now. It actually could be bipolar. That would have been interesting. Um, I thought actually it kind of sounded like it was going down to zero. Anyway, uh, yeah, which is the same sort of functionality that you have elsewhere. <laughs> Crazy. Okay. Um... <laughs> We have single, which is one of my favorite things in the world because single means that this waveform, that is this LFO, it goes through one cycle of its slow waveform and then it stops. So basically it becomes a modulation that happens once or you can use it as an envelope that happens. And this is really great for creating attack transients because a lot of sounds have a little behavior at the beginning where the string was plucked or whatever. Okay, that's kind of a cool thing. But let's speed up the rate of the uh, single LFO cycle or this new envelope we've created. And we can make it re-trigger. And by affecting the curve and the symmetry, we can get a different shape. (laughs) 
And of course, we have sync, where it will sync up with uh, the sequencer or the arpeggiator. And again, if you want to uh, use the settings button, it opens up the, oh, whoops, that's not what we're doing here. How did that happen? Sync. Uh, you, you can access, just like we did in the other LFOs, by holding the sync or using settings to get to the sync, you can set whether it's binary, uh, the rhythm is happening in a binary fashion with the rhythm of the sequencer, a triplet, which is uh, a triple uh, meter in regard to the sequencer, and of course dotted. Um, once again, the rate then becomes LFO divisions instead of an actual LFO rate. And last, we come to LFO1, which... <laughs> times LFO1, which basically means that LFO1 uh, affects the way that this LFO affects <laughs> what it's affecting. So we've got this LFO happening, right? Uh, should I point out at this point that this can be voltage controlled because it's a modular synthesizer? So any of these settings can be varied over time or rhythmically, uh, perhaps even using one of the other LFOs. Um, so that's cool. But we also have this times LFO one. Listen to what happens. This is what we have normally. So the voltage output of the LFO signal controls how this works now. You can hear it going into the negative. Weird stuff. And of course, you could use this with single. Anyway, uh, so yeah. <laughs> Suffice it to say, uh, these LFOs are not a joke. I remember so many vintage synthesizers where the LFO was a <laughs> sign or a, more often a triangle or a square and you could control the rate and it was naturally routed to either the filter or the pitch and that was it. And then you have this with all of these incredible functions, all of these possibilities, all of these ways that mix. I mean, you can you can have all three of these LFOs on at once if you wanted to be absolutely crazy. This is just going to be cacophonous. <laughs> Anyway, uh, the LFO possibilities on the synthesizer really take LFO to a new level, a modular level, where you have incredible amounts of possibility, incredible amounts of functional choices that you can make, and then you can apply it to literally anything. And you can voltage control its settings. <laughs> so if you want the rate to change or the phase to change or the fade in to change or the symmetry to change, you can voltage control it, causing LFOs to control each other. Uh, uh, yeah. So 
That's how they work. How you put them to use, I couldn't possibly begin to demonstrate because it's just, the possibilities are so infinite, so unimaginably infinite. Uh, it's, you know, I don't know what else you would want. All right, so those are the LFOs of the Arturia Polybrute. Thank you.